uh, 50 years ago, I had a, a spontaneous, I, I didn't know what it was or, or how to refer to it. I didn't have any nomenclature to talk about what was happened to me, but it felt like I turned inside out, like a, like a flower bud, a little tight flower bud, boom, opened and stayed open. And the, a lot of associated phenomena was very visionary, the, the, the full gamut, I was totally stunned. And then afterwards there were aftershocks, I call them, of visions and, <clears throat> but it happened naturally to me. It didn't, I've never had a practice. I, I, all the stuff they say do, I never had any interest in doing any of that. <clears throat> it so happened, my life since then has been in a way like a Forrest Gump movie. I found myself knowing people and meeting people backstage all through the this so-called spiritual crowd <clears throat> being good friends, close friends. And so my take on all of it is backstage. I didn't join anything. I, didn't, I just didn't do. I never meditated. I never followed any rules or, or anything like that. It's just a natural, just something which is very, very natural. Uh, repose comes to me when I'm in repose, I'm in repose. And when I'm not, I'm not. Uh, meditating is not my thing. Uh, I, I feel very, I've been very, very, very fortunate in business in my life. I was born and raised here. I'm 81 years old now. I was born and raised 20 miles from where I am right now as my wife of 42 years. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a local, I'm just a local guy. And, um, <clears throat> but I've met remarkable people. Uh, in, in this unfolding, almost in a Forrest Gump way, just as, as, fate, would, as fate would have it. Um, I got to be friends, very close friends with Ramana Maharshi's nephew, Ganeshan. We were like very best friends for 10 years. He's been to my home many times. I've been to his home. We've traveled all over together and vacationed together. Same with others. Um, <clears throat> I met Muktananda when he first came here. Uh, all the rumors and all the stuff about it doesn't bother me at all. All this human stuff. A lot of humor backstage. I met Ron Doss early on, a friend of mine. Bo Lozoff was doing a prison ushering project with him. So I met him over at Bo's home and, and uh, I, the Bhagwan Das guy who introduced him to me and Corolla, met him, we got to be friends. He visited me here, I visited him in California. And so I know it's just a backstage thing. Uh, I never had a so-called darshan that wasn't mutual with anyone. No, no, somebody looking up or down, it, 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 all, all has been mutual. Uh, <clears throat> I make fun of these guys all the time. 
all the spirituality stuff, people like Muji, oh my God, <laughs> what a con artist, it's funny, it's funny. Uh, people like Bentinho, uh, I, I met him and, and uh, saw backstage there. I mean, these are, there's some real narcissism and, and stuff going on. And it's amazing that people buy into it, but it's small potatoes next to what the evangelicals and Trump are doing. And that's a huge call. It's the same, same old, same old. Or the whole Hindu thing with reincarnation and karma and the caste system and all that stuff is ridiculous. It's just frou-frou. So uh, I approach it with a lot of humor and everything and respect too. I mean, I, I, I respect a lot, of, a lot of these people, well-intended people. A lot of it is, you see the stage, the stagecraft, the stage names, it's entertainment. And then you take it a step further and glorify the entertainment, it's glorified entertainment for a captive audience. It's pretty straight up. And, and people, the wannabes and gawkers show up just like it was the Beatles or, or whatever the fan club might be around a personality, it's just no different. Uh, Rob Doss was liked to do stand up before he ever did the mushrooms. He actually did some stand up. He liked it. He's a good entertainer. I, one time, first time, second time I met him, uh, there was a, a Jewish guy come into town and wanted, wanted to meet me. His name was Shlomo Karbach, and he, they call him the singing rabbi. And he was kind of well known at the time. So I said, Shlomo, you want to go meet Ram Das? He said, yeah, I'd love to. So I drove, up, drove him over to Bo's house and, and uh, so we had a, a few hours together there, and <clears throat> uh, before we left, I noticed a, a, a little uh, energy in the corner with Shlomo and Ram Das kind of button heads a little bit. So when we left, I said, Shlomo, what was going on there? <laughs> And uh, he said, he told that story about Zombak suit, that fable about Zombak the tailor and trying to fit into the suit <laughs> and everything and everything. And oh my God, there's a Jew acting like a Hindu. He's doing exactly the, the fable that he was, he just cracked up laughing because he was a Jew pretending to be a Hindu. Same, just <laughs> like the, the fable he was telling. Sometimes we teach that best, that which we need to learn the most. And uh, so I never looked to, to Ram Das, other people as, I never worshiped them as idol. I call them idols, I dash D O L L S, idols. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> But certainly I could have a conversation and joke around and have a good time and appreciate and also acknowledge, I mean, consciousness is a marvel. It's a marvel beyond comprehension, full spectrum. It's all over the place. And I, I marvel, I, I marvel at all of it, just like everyone else does. And uh, I, I we can kiss the sky, but it's a transient kiss. It's just a kiss. And the kisser is impermanent, but it's a real kiss. And, and uh, I honor that, I, I respect that. 
and everything. But the idol thing, what I see going on is, is absolutely crazy. And people making idols out of this. Uh, a lot of Westerners going over to India <clears throat> and getting infatuated with all the Indian terminology and all the terms and just because they're, they're fancy words, they made a, a certain inside uh, way of speaking with one another like karma and reincarnation and sat guru and uh, Advaita Vedanta and, and all of these things that have common sense terms. Yeah, that have common sense words that are more comfortable to me. Uh, I, one of the things on Facebook has been going around lately, <clears throat> all these ideas about afterlife scenarios and bardos and reincarnation and all of that stuff. And it's silly. I mean, is some old decrepit guy is going to die and then this soul is going to go over to some newborn fresh baby, this emerging life, and usurp that 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 innocent young thing and, and usurp and insert himself into that newborn child with us with a host of sins. It's the craziest thing imaginable. It's just nuts. The whole reincarnation is crazy. And what they call Akashic Record, you know, is we call it the DNA code. Just simple, simple things. Uh, I, I find I always found it amusing that you, you go over to India and they say, well, Ramana Maharshi took Maha Samadhi. And I said, well, what is Maha Samadhi? No more births. Well, that's easy. That's, we all get that for free. <laughs> and, and, but they reserve it for the upper the upper caste, after they've been so good, 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 then they can have that when it's really our death right is with our birthright. And, and we all take this, what they call Mahasamadhi, uh, what they call Turiya or Nervicopal Samadhi. It's just an utter naught. It's, it's nothing. It's same as Maha Samadhi or forever before you're born. And they make a big deal out of it. Nothing's nothing. Uh, <clears throat> I call it an utter naught because people want to put an it or that or something with it. My experience with Nerva Koppel is that there's no time, there's no duration, there's nothing. If, if, if you're in a neural couple, it's like they take, cut this part out of your life here and here and take the two ends and splice it together. And it's like just changing a frame in a movie, boom, boom, and that's gone. It's like forever before you're born, like Annis going under anesthesia. The takeaway is it's benign like dream of sleep, it's benign. That's the takeaway, that's the beauty of it. But you don't have to go through all these big fancy words and all this stuff and try to achieve it. You're not gonna achieve any of it. It either comes or it doesn't, a flower blooms or it doesn't. You're not gonna rip a bud open. That's uh, humans bloom. Not all, not all humans bloom, but humans that bloom. Some bloom in the arts or professions or in trades, spirituality doesn't own a human being blooming just because they've got some maps, some cosmologies drawn up. So <clears throat> when I hear spirituality, they want to, it's like they want to take your, take your bloom, claim it, brand it with their brand, and then rent it back to you. 
It's insane. All this mess. <clears throat> when uh, I was with Ganeshan, spent a lot of time with Ganeshan and met his family, et cetera. I asked him numer numerous times, I said, was your uncle an ordinary human being? And he said, yes, John, he was an ordinary human being. Yeah, he got in trouble for saying it. Oh, no. <laughs> because I repeated it. And he got in big trouble. So we're not close friends. We, we communicate, but we don't visit and hang because I'm a threat to the museum curators who want to position him as a messiah. But I know he's an ordinary human being. I think they do a wonderful job as museum curators. Beautiful job, nice, they got nice chanting there. Everything's beautiful and nice and everything, but but it, it's it's a museum. They got the bookstore. They got everybody. They've got this bag with with a Romana Sram face, like going to a trade show. <laughs> so <clears throat> every, everybody in town is it, the local economy. Everybody's in on it and has a story, a miracle story to say. And it builds and it feeds, they all feed on that and they get carried away. Evangelicals get carried away on their, on their whole thing. They have blooms too, but they give Jesus the credit and there they go. And, and, and then they're, they're paying Joel Osteen money to be themselves. It's crazy. So, uh, I, I, when I read people like UG Krishnamurti or J. Krishnamurti or other people, they see through this. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a big fan of the story of L. Frank Baum. I don't know if you know much about L. Frank Baum. Yeah. He wrote The Wizard of Oz. Yes, yeah. He wrote, he wrote it about the time that Ramona ran away from home as a teenager. He dropped out of school. He's living with his uncle. He ran away from home to, uh, because his uncle was picking on him for dropping out. He's basically dropping out of everything. He had to turn it inside out. <clears throat> and he ran away from home. About that time, same time, L. Frank Baum wrote The Wizard of Oz. Oh, L. Wow. Frank Baum was a member. L. Frank Baum was a member of the Theosophical Society, as was his wife and his mother-in-law. Not many people know this. <clears throat> the story came through spontaneous to L. Frank Baum. And it's got synchronicity all over it. The takeaway from the Wizard of Oz is exactly the takeaway you get from Ramana Maharshi. You had it all along. Be as you are. That's the takeaway. Something like the Wizard of Oz has reached, is still today the most watched movie in history. No. No movie has been seen more by that movie by more different audiences. And it's really endearing to so many people. But yet they haven't made a religion out of it. There's no, no idol in it. You, you can't join it. Uh, and that's beautiful. It's, it's in the arts and it's told in a way and in parables in a way that it doesn't attract all that religious stuff. So Toto as a character in The Wizard of Oz pulls the curtain back to reveal an ordinary human being that everybody was seeing as the mighty Wizard of Oz. 
the beauty of this story is not only did it restore love for Dorothy and her comrades on the journey, but even Professor Marvel, who was the Wizard of Oz, when shown, when the Wizard of Oz was shown, oh, this is just Professor Marvel, it restored love to Professor Marvel as well, and an equality of vision with everyone that is one step above all this idolatry going on around these gurus. It's a more profound and beautiful story. So people like Robert Salzman and I, I, I accuse him of being Toto, we pull the curtain back <laughs> so people can see the ordinary. It's just ordinary. And that's where empowerment comes when we quit projecting our own blooming into another human being and then worship this other human being while they rent it back to us. It's not demeaning, it's not demeaning to pull the curtain back. It's empowering, it's affirming, profoundly affirming. Uh, <clears throat> emoji comes along, I'll say something. Ramon Maharshi never had a lineage, he never had a master. He never said he was a master. The guy was just an ordinary guy who was what I would call a sage. A, a sage is going to relieve you of your wannabes and your gawking and your seeking, not exploit it. That's what a, a, a genuine sage, a genuine mentor would be a vision of equality and bring, and bring that out, not come down as Lord on high with some kind of lineage bullshit. <laughs> so, so when I see it pop up, I take people to task on it and, and have a good time about it. That's so fascinating, John. I, I really love that. Uh, it, I'm, I'm in on the joke too. It's, it's, uh, this is, this is kind of like a funny thing that, that, that I'm doing. There's nothing, um, media that we're doing. Um, I really liked my interview with Robert. We, uh, we had so much fun. Have you, have you thought about writing a book, John, about this? This is a fascinating story. This is when, I sold, when I, I sold my business, I wrote a vanity, a vanity book and, and called Wisdom Soft Whisper. And, uh, I might sell one a year or something through Amazon, but that's it. Uh, Ganeshan had brought me his life's work and wanted me to pin that for him. And I was going to call it the human gospel of Ramana Maharshi, which was stories of Ganeshan's interactions with 63 of the old devotees of Ramana Maharshi. And, uh, and it was all finished and ready to go and edited and, and, and was ready to go. And, but in there, he, I quoted him in saying that his uncle was an ordinary human being and the family got wind of it and that was the end of it. They uh, were outraged and I didn't publish it or anything. I, assigned it all over to that crowd as you do with it as you want because it couldn't be it's not that much to me i don't need to be a, a book guy or anything like that not at all i would have loved to to read that book that would have been so such I, a good read <clears throat> that would have been a, an amazing read so, uh So the, the cornerstone of the book, right after <clears throat> I had my, I turned inside out, I dropped out, lost my wife, my child, every, my whole life just totally fell apart. I was home, I, I just, it was awful. 
uh, I couldn't, the old way of doing and contrivance just fell away and you wouldn't come back, just fell away. So I, my wife went off to be with my best friend and, and with my, my son and I was pretty devastated. I wound up in the mountains of Jamaica with a Rasta elder, his name is Jamesy. And uh, I had met him before that on a, a journey there. And he would say, he told me, he said, when you come back, I'll be on that top of that next mountain you see over there. This is already in the bush country. And you just follow this path. He pointed to a path and I'll be there and, and you'll have a place. So when it all fell apart, I sold my last thing I had, which was a, a, a Volkswagen, and bought a backpack and a plane ticket and off I went. And uh, I went to that place and did, it was a pretty long hike in the back country, but I got to the top of that mountain from that path and there he was and there was a place built. It was a bamboo, a little bamboo hut with a dirt floor, but it, you could see the Caribbean Sea out there. It was really beautiful. <clears throat> and he, he was, his mantra was I and I one love. And that sense of being turned out inside out with him was mutual. It was seamless. He just called it I and I one love. And he served me profoundly. He, without any notion of reciprocity, there's no money in it or anything like that. He didn't have anything to get from it. But he fed me and took care of me. And uh, it, was, it was like a, a true grandfather. I'm from North Carolina, I'm from the South here. I had racial things in the back of my mind, but here I was with the most loving human being of my life with a, with a, a, a DNA that goes into Ethiopia. And, and uh, it was just a huge wow, just a huge wow for me. And I'd have been attracted to success and money and things, things of that nature. And all of that had fallen away. But I was there and a, a friend of mine came up to visit me. Several of my friends came in there to visit me. And there was one friend, his name was Scott. And he came there in a day and got a, got a message that the, the kid Guru Maharaji had come to America. And this was some, some kid where he and his brother divided up the world and everything. And so he left all chasing after this little kid guru. And, and so uh, several of us were in the, in the little bamboo hut and James, he appeared in, in, in the door, in the doorway. And, and, he, and he said, uh, says, 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 I share said story. <laughs> and he goes on to the story. He said, there was once said puppy dog who wanted a bone so bad. He really wanted that bone. And he just wanted that bone. He couldn't believe how much that dog wanted that bone. And that puppy searched and searched and searched and searched and searched and searched and searched. And, searched. and, and then there was a, I'll just use this as an example. It, the, the, the dog, it, there was a stick on the floor, uh, on the dirt floor. And so James, he reaches down on the floor and comes up with a stick in his mouth. <laughs> he said, Puffy dog has stick. Puffy dog has stick. Puffy dog is so happy. And he starts <laughs> strutting all around and acting happy. Happy, puffy dog. Happy, puffy dog. Happy, happy. Puffy dog is. But running out so heavy, <laughs> just heavy running by a city, and finally comes to a still 
still pool in the stream and looks down <laughs> and sees the reflection of the moon in his mouth and goes, <laughs> and the moon goes down. Oh no, puppy dog lost the bone. And so <laughs> James is going, going, going out and the sticks laying down on the on the dirt floor <clears throat> and and uh, uh, so we go, go through the whole thing. Puppy dog wants wants bone. He looks and looks and looks and looks, and he's ransacking the hut and everything, looking for the bone. And then he finds it. Hurt. Found bone again. Puppy dog. Puppy dog really <laughs> happy now. Puppy dog. So puppy dog runs out, runs out to the same said stream and looks into the little still pool and sees the reflection and understands the bone is in his mouth and <laughs> holds the bone. And so that's the cornerstone of this book about the tendency to drop that, to drop the bone looking at one's reflection in another human being. And, wow. And the simplicity of just realizing it's just a reflection. Yes, it's beautiful. Yes, it's deep. Yes, it's all of that, but it's just a reflection of what you already have. Beautiful. No need to drop the bone. To go, <laughs> to go for the bone in the reflection. So that's, that's the wisdom. Beautiful. That's it's beautiful. that simple. I really like that. That that's beautiful. John, have you um, you know, in in hanging out with the James, with Robert? Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, John. With who? With Robert Saltzman. Um, have Say you, that have again. you knowing Robert Saltzman? You know, it, it's great. He's a great guy. I really like him. Um, have you um have you gone to one of his you know meetings? You know, have you met him in person? Have you guys hung out before? Have you met before Robert Saltzman? Did you go to his Mexico place? And you know, he usually has this uh, uh, meetings or something. Uh yes. Robert Saltzman first visited me here. And then we went to the mountains with some friends of mine and spent a week here in Catania. And that's where we really got to know one another really well, just hanging out and fixing meals together and him meeting a lot of my friends. And then later we went to the coast down at Nags Head and rented a, a big house. And he and Catania came up and spent another week with us and we had a lot of fun and, and, and time together. So we're close friends. So when, when uh, Robert brought up the idea of doing something in Tunnel, I says, I'll come down there and run a big house and get, get some people to hang out in there and we'll, we'll be a part of it. We'll have a good time. So yeah, I was there. I, when I got there, I didn't realize that he had a chair right there beside for me to sit in and had me mic'd up and everything. So it was kind of fun. I, I didn't really expect that. But uh, yeah, we're good friends. We're good, close personal friends. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear. I really respect you... That's great really to hear. I respect him a lot. He's really. Yeah. Yeah, he, he mentioned you. And, and I think that's, that's what I pro probably connected it. You know, uh, Robert Salzman and you. Uh, being friends. I think he, he mentioned you in one of the interviews that I did with him. Um, do you have any plans to talk again, like what you did with Robert, um, you know, in one of those, you know, one of those uh, houses? I think that would be really fascinating to hear you again, speak about this, or just really funny tales from the backstage. I just, it's spontaneous, like you and I talking. I, I never know. I don't have any contrivance about any of this at all. I have other things that I'm doing. I, in the food business, I'm developing a, a 
condiments using a new kind of miso that's, that's made with chickpeas instead of soy. So I'm doing the branding and positioning and putting a pretty big project for national rollout on that. A couple of years ago, I developed a hemp food, which is a tempe made with chickpeas and hemp seeds, and it's called hemp A, and it's rolling out and doing good on the market. So I oh, do those okay. kind of things. I put together a little chunk. <clears throat> uh, my son was going to do a career change six years ago. So I, I incubated a little chocolate scene for him and then he changed his mind. But I was having so much fun, I kept it as a hobby business. So I make chocolate, I have a, a guest house and turned it into a little chocolate shop and we grind it and mold oh, it and nice. wrap it and sell it online. I have wonderful uh, customers. Uh, we we've done very well we're we don't have to worry about income or anything like that so we just enjoying ourselves at a beautiful squat spots uh in rural north carolina we're on 19 acres of beautiful land oh and beautiful fields I should, I should come and, visit you uh john uh, yeah I would love. So life I also, is good. Life yeah, is that's good great. For, that's great. That's good to hear. I want to try your chocolates. I was looking at your website there, and, and it looks really, yeah. really good. Can you? Or, I'm from Canada. I'm in Toronto, Canada. Can you order it from uh, from online? Do you ship to Canada? Yeah. Yeah, I'll ship anywhere. Oh, I good. Got, I got some customers in Europe. Oh, good. <laughs> that, some customers. I met. Uh, when I was with Robert a year ago, and so so they buy it back from me. Yeah, I would like to try some. I'll, I'll go to your website. I don't want to build a big. Some. What's that? Sorry. Yeah, uh, I'm not building a big business with it, but uh, uh, but I I love my customers and and like to make the chocolate. And it's uh, it's all hand done. I hand wrap it and fold it and deal with it and put it in the mailbox. All right, you're you're going to get an order from me. The food, Just food is, I'm a, <laughs> yeah, I'm a food guy, and and uh, I, I've been had a, a lot of success and a lot of fun in the in the food business have you met um have you met alan watts a lot of people ask ask about alan watts no but what do you think of 50 him? years ago when i 50 years ago when i turned inside out uh a friend gave me a book called this is it and i read it a real quick read, and it it just totally hit the nail on the head. When there was nothing else affirmative out there other than some rock musicians and lyrics, which were which were Moody Blues or Beatles or whatever, which struck a chord. But but that was the first thing I read that made that that spoke to me where I, it was an affirmation. So I, 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 I appreciated reading about Alan Watts, but I never met him. That's great. Yeah, I, I, I think um, when, when um, this apparent thing happening, Inside Out happened too, I was just, you know, I didn't know what to make of it. It was, it was so, um, it was spontaneous, but it was extraordinarily ordinary. Um, and but it was just kind of like, wow, wow, this is this is so, um, this is it, you know, this is normal, and this is extraordinary at the same time. It was just so hard to put into words. It was just kind of like, a, and and you know what? I was I was reading all of these books before, and that didn't really matter anymore. That that didn't even make sense anymore. Because those were not it, you know. It, it's just, it's just. You're, you're right. They're like, they're like um, barbed wires. All of these spiritual books, 
in a, in a plain field in a beautiful garden. You know, there's a barbed wire and 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 um, so I started. Um, I think you know I started um, just not giving giving a care a lot for for any of that anymore, and I just lived life as a DJ. I started DJing, enjoying the island, you know, enjoying the sceneries. And didn't really don't really have any ambition to talk about this or to write a book. Although there's a book that, that I'm kind of like writing, but no ambition at all. If it doesn't, you know, I can delete the book. That's completely all right. You know, it's it's no big deal. It's just you're right. It's just life, you know. And I don't have any any um, ambition to to teach or to be in a podium or on a pedestal because it's just that's not it. You know, it's it's just so ordinary. Yeah, I think so it's in the DNA. What's that? So, I, I sorry, think it's in ahead. the DNA. Code. I, I think it's part of the DNA code. Some people bloom, some people don't. But yeah. it's kind of like a, a, a bud, an inverted bud of a flower. And when it breaks open, and then it doesn't flower that way again. If you chase the bloom, you're, you're missing the flowering and the scent That's right. and, and other things. That's right. So the tendency to go back and try to get another bloom, that's not going to happen. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> so, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I thank you for your time. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Let's, I want to do this again, John. Can, can we have another time to talk about again? John, I would love to have a, a part two of this. I just love listening to, to the stories uh, yeah, sure. of, of chocolates, of um, just the, all the tales from the backstage. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah. I really... The backstage, is the backstage stories from, uh, you know, it's really great. It's really great. It, this is kind of like where I'm at too. I'm, I'm behind the screen. I, I don't, you know, I don't, um, you know, people are asking me to speak about this and I'm like, I'm just happy interviewing people. It, it's more fun. You know, you're not, you're not a public figure or anything like that, which is, which is, which is okay. Well, John, I'll, 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 I'll go to your, to your website and order some chocolate and then, um, Let's, I'll all message right. you again. Let's talk again soon because this is really fun. I like hearing all these stories. Okay. It's just, and say, uh, I'll say hi to, to Robert and told, told him that I talked to you. All right. Well, thank you all so right. much. Well, let's, I'll email you again and uh, thank you. This was fun. Take care. Thank you.